welcome. Today I am working on Ina Salisbury's four core challenge for July of 2022. Ina has um, four core ingredients for these challenges that you need to incorporate either into 2D or 3D art piece. And I tend to like doing the 3D art pieces uh, just because that's my jam. And so I, um, I'm going to tell you what her four core ingredients are and kind of what I'm thinking and we'll see how it comes together. So the first thing is to pick a talent or a superpower and just in her describing of, um, of this challenge this month, I immediately knew I wanted to pick magic, uh, just cause it's something that kind of a theme that runs through a lot of the stuff I do and enjoy. So it's magic and I'm going to uh, include a fairy y'all. I'm, I know I've got a thing for using these Tim Holtz paper dolls and putting wings on them and making fairies. I have at least two if not three videos i'm gonna link some of them um maybe throughout this video but i'll be making a fairy in this but you also have to incorporate a description of your t talent or superpower within the piece and so i am going to use one of my favorite quotes which is a raw doll quote which is those who don't believe in magic will never find it. So, and I love Raw Dahl. He's my favorite children's author. I grew up reading him. So I'm gonna use, I don't know, I may redo this somehow, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna use that quote. And then you need to include a piece of map. Now I kept coming up in my mind, I wanted like a black and white or distressed looking map. And I, everything I found was like this, with lots of colors, even in dictionaries, every, I looked all over the craft room for just a black and white map and finally just decided to take this map and print a portion of it in black and white so that's what I've done I might use this I might change my mind and go ahead and use this map I don't know yet so I just have to include some map in it and then include something wooden in its natural color so initially I picked this as my substrate and thought oh I'll just have this wood showing but in my when I heard Ina describing what she wanted us to do, I immediately was like, well, I'm just going to do its natural, natural state and use some sticks. So I think I'm still going to use the sticks. I may paint this in some way. I'm y'all. I don't know. I've got these basic ideas. I've got this frame that I want to put in here. I've got some basic ideas, but I just I'm trying to get it all rounded up. So we're going to see how this goes. All right, y'all, so the first thing I did after a little bit of thought was I took my box and some Americana acrylic paint and Irish moss, and I am painting the entire box. Not the back, but the front, the inside, the sides, the ins all of that. Everything but the back <laughs> is getting a coat of this paint. So, yeah, I'm not going to make y'all watch all of that. And then I come in with some folk art antiquing wax, and I am going to go on the inside edges not the like inside main part because that's gonna be covered with something else but these inside edges I wanted it just a little bit darker um, the rest of it is gonna have other treatments on it and I just that green is greener really than I wanted it to be but it's such a lovely color so I'm just darkening it up with that bit of antiquing wax and wiping that off so it has more of an aged antique feel and now I'm coming in with my sticks. What I am using is, y'all, that is a dog or a nail trimmer for like dogs and cats from the dollar store that I'm using to trim my sticks down. So I am putting them up, as you can see, to my box and kind of marking it. I found a better way to do it later. But yeah, I'm just going to go through and go through my sticks and cut them down to size so that they fit inside that box. I'm going to let you watch this for a minute. And let you know that once I had enough sticks that would fill the inside of the box, I started gluing them down somehow. The camera went off or I didn't turn it on or who knows, something happened when I started gluing it down. So this next scene you'll see I've already started gluing them down. And I'm just going to use some E6000. And it was a bit more fiddly than I'd hoped it would be. I didn't take into account that, of course, sticks are going to have their own natural bends and curves and things like that. So there's going to be some openings in the back and that's part of the reason I did paint this because I wanted I wanted some of the color to come through but I got quite a bit of the glue also coming through 
So it was kind of a sloppy process, but um, it ends up working out exactly the way I wanted it to. So, and y'all, when I picked out sticks, I made sure I got fairly thin ones, ones that I knew that I could cut and that would, I don't know, kind of be a better scale for this. I didn't want anything that was going to be too bulky within inside my box. So as you can see, um, for the most part, I'm putting the glue straight on the stick. A few of them, I did try putting it in the box. Um, but I had to keep in mind which parts of the stick would be actually touching the box because of their shaping. They didn't all touch the box. And then once I got the whole inside the box covered, I went in with a few of the thinner, skinnier ones and filled in a couple of the gaps just with some little other sticks. And I let that dry for a while. Um, probably, I think, every night. This project didn't take long, but a lot of the things I did it took drying time. And this is one of them, letting the glue kind of sit and dry. Even though that E6000 works pretty quickly, it, it takes a little bit of time to get through it. So I, I tested those out. And while that was drying, I came back in with my little picture frame. Now, y'all, I found this at a thrift store, but I believe it's from Michael's probably from their like their dollar section and it had a little one of the stand-up things but it wasn't screwed in it was just kind of glued on so I used that little scraper tool to pop it off and then scraped off some of the excess so just like that I have got it flat back down and I opened it up and I'm taking out that insert to use as a template for my map so I'm gonna grab my map and trace that little insert that and cut it down to size and I kept all this in just so you can see um, I made sure I did it up against one of the edges I tried to find something that had like lots of texture and writing and that kind of on it but I put it up against one of the sides so I knew that everything was square I guess to a point so and I'm gonna just cut this down and then I'm going to come in with some distress oxides because like I told you before, I really wanted kind of an age distressed looking map. And y'all initially when I was thinking about doing a project on magic and all of that, I was thinking I would do some kind of Harry Potter theme and have books on magic in there and not so much the raw dog quote. And I wanted the Marauders map, but I just, yeah, it just... Everything I thought of was going to be more in-depth than I wanted. So I am doing this all myself. So I've got that little copy paper of map. And I've got a cosmetic sponge with some Distress Ink and tea dye that I kind of went over it. And then I've got the Distress Ink and old paper that y'all see I'm just blotting it straight on top of that. And uh, smearing it around a little bit. And then I'll use Walnut Stain kind of around some of the edges to kind of give it you know, more of that, like, it's been handled kind of feel. So it's got several different colors on there, really, to to make it feel very authentic and dark and kind of go with the, the woods and stuff in the back. Now, I've got my quote there, and I decided which one would fit best within my frame. And I'm going to glue it down onto some cardstock just because I know I'm going to cut out each line of that individually and I know that would make it super floppy and I wanted it to have a little, be a little more substantial. So I'm just gluing it with an uh, Uhu glue stick onto this cardstock and I'm going to make sure it's nice and flat with no bubbles and then I'm going to cut it out and cut each, and like I said, each individual line. When I typed it up, I kind of separated the words into the way I thought it would be best in case I had to cut it down like this so so I'm gonna cut this um I can't remember if I cut this all down for y'all or if I'm gonna make y'all sit and watch me cut each individual line out but I get those you know try to space them evenly a little bit so that um the top and the bottom were all about the same you know so it looked like it all belonged together now the next step I'm going to show you, I'm going to just show you a little bit of it because it ends up being something I really hate and we're going to change it later. <laughs> so I've got these cut down and I have some Moan Lawn Distress Ink. I do love this color and I just kind of lightly am putting it on my car, I mean, on my cards, on my sentiment there so that, you know, because I've got that green of the box and I thought, oh, the green of the sentiment will help bring that through. 
Um, and it's not really the right shade of green, and I didn't think that would bother me, but it, it's going to. So I did stick that onto my map and put it into my frame, but we'll take it out in a little bit. <laughs> All right, and to make my fairy, I'm just using a little bit more of the E6000, and I glued those wings onto that fairy. Both the wings and the Paper Doll or Tim Holtz products, I will try to put links to both of those below. Oh, maybe I didn't glue that down. So yeah, I just used some, some more glue stick to glue those words onto my map. And like I said, I'm, you know, I like the, the color of the mown grass, but you can look at the color of it and the color of my box and they're so different. And it's, I'm going to add some other things later that I thought, oh, maybe it'll tame it. Maybe you won't notice it as much. Maybe it'll be fine. It's not. <laughs> it's not so but it does slip perfectly in and if you can see when I line those up I kind of put it all toward the right side because I knew I was gonna put my fairy there on the left side and I didn't want too much of that word being obscured by my fairy so I'm gonna go ahead and take her with um some yeah, I'm studying this far too long um I don't know what I was thinking about but I'm gonna go ahead and take some E6000 and just put a line up her middle right there and stick her on it to my picture frame again making sure one of those wings um, almost covers one of the longer lines but I you know I placed her well and then I'm gonna bring out some texture paste y'all I love texture paste this is the Ranger opaque texture paste and I'm using a palette knife to just scrape it on there I'm gonna pull out a silicone brush thing to kind of scrape up anything that gets on the inside not super concerned about it but I don't want to coat the inside so much that's kind of why we altered the inside with that antiquing wax so I'm just getting this I don't mind if some of that green shows through because when it crackles it's going to show through anyway so I'm just getting it on there in kind of a inconsistent manner I want some areas thicker because where the crackle paste is thicker the cracks are thicker and where it's thinner the cracks are smaller so I, I kind of want that variation I want it to feel like it's natural and old just like the woods that are in the there so and I'm gonna do the whole front and then all four sides with the crackle paste I'll show you a little bit of the sides again this is super inconsistent I'm letting that green show through and I just did the two like the left and right side and let it dry and then came back and did the top and bottom so I could handle it better but I let it air dry because crackle paste always does better if you let it air dry um, heat drying it just you don't get the cracks you just don't get them all right so there is my messy messy crackle application I'm trying to smooth out some of the humps and lumps of it and look at that it is all crackled. I don't know if you can see the crackles with the light, but I am showing you that where that E6000 had dried, it's super shiny in the background because I was messy with it. So I got some more of that, that Irish moss paint and I'm just going in with a super thin paintbrush and covering up some of the more obvious areas. I kept trying to tell myself that if some of it shows, it's fine. It kind of looks like it's wet, like it's rained and it's sparkly and that's fine. But yeah, I, I had to cover up anything that was too, too much. And I keep using my frame in there to kind of, you know, because I knew it would cover up some of it. So I wasn't going to try to, you know, mark all, I mean, paint over all of it because some of it was going to be covered anyway. So I'm going to finish getting that down. And then I've grabbed my Walnut Stain Distress Ox, not Oxide, Distress Ink again. And I'm rubbing it over the whole front of that where the crackle paste is. I'm going to take a damp paintbrush. I didn't want anything too wet. So I'm trying to wipe it, get as much water as I can off because I don't want it to drip or anything. I just wanted to kind of smear out that ink and let it get into some of those cracks and give it more of a distress feel. What distress ink is supposed to do. So, and it really does a great job because that white is so, so stark on there. And it really ends up looking great with with all my, my sticks. Yeah. 
And then I'm going to do um, also the top, you know, the outside edges as well. So, and I'm going to do the same way, just rub that Distress ink over it and then use my damp paintbrush. Yep, just like that to smear it out. And so, and in this way, it, that green kind of matches where we put that antiquing wax on the inside. So it's got that little bit of brown to it. So it's perfect. All right, so that is all done. And for an added bonus, y'all, there's something about the woods and moss and fairies and all of that. That's that's my jam. I um I love all that. So I've got some aliens tacky glue and a popsicle stick. And I am just using that popsicle stick to smoosh in some of that glue. When I put my sticks in, if they were too short, I made sure I pushed them to the top and left any of the open area at the bottom because I knew I was going to add some moss in here. So I'm just making sure I get it good and tacky with my tacking glue. And then this moss I'm using is just from the Dollar Tree, I think. Y'all, Maybe it's called reindeer moss. I'm not sure. It's just some moss from the Dollar Tree. And I like the tacky glue with it because it is tacky and will stick to it immediately. So I'm just basically making that moss stick to that glue. I'm going to pick it up here in a second once I... I'm pretty happy about where it all is. <laughs> Shake it like that and um, yeah, let that dry. And now it's time to, to stick my, my fairy in there. So I'm looking at her for far too long trying to decide if, she, if I'm ready to, to make that leap. And so I'm, what did I do? I decided there that I'm not ready because I do not like that green. It does not work. I thought maybe once I added the moss because it's a different shade than the paint that it would be okay. But no, it, it, I've decided that it needed to be just plain white because my fairy there is she is so stark white that I think it would go with it. So I did the same thing by printing out the words and putting them on the cardstock and um, cutting them out individually and now I've got that walnut sand distress ink and I am just very carefully edging all of the edges of these words with with that ink and then I will glue them back onto my mat piece. I was really fortunate that I was able to pry those other words off my mat piece but if it had torn or messed up or I couldn't get them off I knew I had that whole rest of the page of the map that I could use and just recreate it with the things I just did I had to remind I have to remind myself sometimes I have these supplies I can do it again <laughs> so I just edged those just to give them a little bit of shadow and glued it back in and then I'll pop them back in to my little frame and y'all that's so much better I don't know what I was thinking with that green so I'm going to stick that in there and um, make sure it's fit and everything looks good. And yeah, oh, so much better. All right, so now I'm going to bring all that in. The moss has had a chance to dry. Um, and then I remember that I had something else I wanted to add to this, which are these little mushrooms. Y'all, I don't know where these come from. Um, I think they're florally because they've got those like floral stems wire on it that I'm trimming off with my wire cutters but they are, I've got to buy some more I love them I got them I think in a thrift store or somebody gave them to me or something I don't know where they came from but I love them so I just trimmed the wire like you saw off of two of them I am putting some E6000 on like the back of them because I'm kind of pushing them onto the the sticks and into the moss because those bottoms are kind of pointy and I want them hidden and now we are getting where we're going to finish up. So I'm going to swap because I was using my mini E6000 there. I'm going to use my big one and just put it all over the back of this. Now, once I get it, and I get it on there pretty well, but once I get it on there, I realize it's not sticking to those sticks because, again, those sticks have different, some are sunken in, some are bigger, so I put my 6000 on the sticks as well, making sure the ones that are bigger and going to be touching that frame more get plenty of glue. And then this is it, y'all. 
I have to tell you, I love, 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 love this piece. I'm going to give you lots of looks at it. I want to thank Ina for the challenge. I want you to go watch what she has done this month. She will have it probably up at the beginning of August along with what August's four core challenge is. Let me know what you think of this. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Make sure to subscribe and I will see y'all later. Oh gosh, y'all, it's so cute. All right, y'all, bye. Bye.